and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Esper Colorless. That's right, we have a donation deck that was built around Mystic Forge. Um, that was the that was the the goal here, make a Mystic Forge deck. If you don't know this four mana artifact, it allows you to, it's kind of like Experimental Frenzy. You get to look at the top card of your library and you can cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non-land card. So you want to play lots of artifacts, lots of colorless non-land cards. Um, and then if you don't like the top card of your library, also you can tap it, pay a life, and just exile that top card of the library. Now the thing that Mystic Forge, the one, the one thing that Mystic Forge doesn't do that Frenzy does and Bola Citadel does and all those other ones do is they let you play lands. Mystic Forge doesn't let you play lands. And uh, so that, so that's something about the deck where you want to like try to keep hitting land drops with like your with your draw steps, um, so you can keep hitting like when you have Mystic Forge in place, so you can keep hitting land drops if you're trying to cast the other spells off the top. That's the one way where it's definitely worse. Um, what are you doing, Hawkeye? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I wanted to, to play as many colorless cards as I could because of Mystic Forge. So as you see here, we only have three cards that are not colorless. We have Tezzeret Master of the Bridge, which is just a really awesome card to play. That plus two ability, the um, animation is really cool. And it's it's like a the best payoff for playing all sorts of colorless stuff. So that, that leads us to be blue-black. And if you're blue-black, you just got to play Thought Erasure. The, tar the card's just too good. Just, ha just have to play Thought Erasure. So we got there. But then we're playing like a, you know, like all these colorless cards. These colorless cards like don't really kill creatures very well and um, don't affect the battlefield too much as far as like creatures go. And so therefore I wanted to play sweepers. And the best sweeper in the format is Kaya's Wrath. So we got Kaya's Wrath in here as well. So we are a, even though we're a colorless deck, we're an Esper deck because, you know, we got the Esper colors, we got these three cards, but really we're a colorless deck. So that's, that's the name of our deck, Esper Colorless. Um, no, yeah, I don't, I don't mind not having anything, any three mana or five mana cards. Treasure map does a good job of like filling in our three mana slot with that scry. Um, you know, so we get to play a two drop and scry on turn three. That's what we're doing basically all the time there. Um, so sideboard wise, uh, I'm going to try amulet of safekeeping. <laughs> I don't know if this is if this is going to be too janky or not. I'm going to try this against the Scapeshift X. You know, we can make their the creature tokens get minus one, minus zero. That first part is basically nothing. And so, you know, like Scapeshift puts a whole bunch of creature tokens into play. We can make them at least one power instead of two power. And then if we really, we need to get both Amulet Safekeepings in play, though, <laughs> make them both, both zero to make them zero power. That's pretty janky, I know. We got a whole bunch of spy glasses because I think spy glasses are just pretty good in this format. Um, I think they're good against vampires and against scape shift. We got a bunch of unmoored egos for those scape shift decks. Got an ex extra mystic forge. Got the fourth one in the sideboard that we can grab with Karn the Great Creator if we need some more uh, card advantage. Um, I got this Golos over here, which I probably shouldn't have the Golos actually. I should probably cut the Golos. I had it in before. Actually, I had it in for an earlier version that I was using, like, Chromatic Lantern. Actually, I should probably cut this Golos. We have a statue and a Meteor Golem also. Okay, if we cut Golos, what are we going to play? Do we get one Duress in here? What's, like, an anti-control card? Maybe an Elder Spell, a Noxious Grasp. We should probably play one of those, a Duress, and a Noxious Grasp, or an Elder Spell. I don't think we're going to really need Helm of the Host with this one. Let's do Elder Spell. Let's just play an Elder Spell. What if I have a Sahili in the board? Whenever I take out Kaya's Wrath, I bring in Sahili. Ooh, okay. I like that more. Let's get a Sahili in the board. Sahili. I wanted to play Sahili's in the deck, but I, I couldn't really play Sahili's and Kaya's Wraths. Okay, so this is our deck, Esper Colorless. Let's give it a try. 
We're going to play in the traditional constructed queue. We'll play until we win five or lose two, whichever happens first. Over here, I'll update our decklist command. I'll update the decklist on Stream Decker to take out Golos and add a Sahili. The Sublime Artificer. All right, that should be up to date now. Yep, perfect. I'm playing 26 lands here because hitting our land, like as I talked about before, hitting our land drops is really important. Um, that's what I kind of did. I cut like the chromatic lantern stuff and just played more lands. Okay, so we'll get rid of. I need to be able to cast. Kaya's Wrath. I need two white and two black. So getting rid of Watery Grave gives us two white and two black. Still. All right, let's draw our fourth land. Very good. I think I'm going to lead with Karn Sion of Urza instead of Mystic Forge. Start getting, still leading with Sion of Urza. Start getting the card advantage, ticking up. So the great creator can grab Spy Glass, of course, but we can name, you know, like Nicol Bolas, Dragon God. But Grixis does have good artifact removal, which is a tad bit annoying. Speaking of a tad bit annoying, I'd like to hit land drops. Darn, there's no lands in here. I like a spyglass, but I'd rather have a land right now. You may regret that choice. You have got to be kidding me. There are no lands in here. Let's go. Now, Thalmatic Compass, grab us a land. And get this treasure map in play. Oh, yeah. The, yep, the flip icon on Thalmatic Compass is back. Just It was gone on that deck building screen. Good call there. Lost is now returned. Do you want that Ugin? All right, we'll just have Mystic Forge in play, ready to go. Did I have Command the Dread Horde? Oh no, they're just they just have nickel bullets that can flip. I'm just happy drawing this land here. I'm not gonna exile it with Mystic Forge.
Your efforts are few. So no, I, I don't need to scry an upkeep. I, I just want to draw land. I am limitless. My knowledge is endless. Use of that laser. All right, we're finding our lands now. You want to save the Ugin for a turn. Nicobolus the Arisen. Like I'm, I'm not gonna cast. Like there's just nothing that I was gonna cast here, so I'll, I'll just wait and have more information. But yeah, I'll, I'll do scrying and exiling and stuff like that here. Darn, we didn't get to Tesseret. I don't think we really need Kai's Wrath against Grixis. I guess it does kill Nicobolus, but I think we're fine with. Let's let's take Dragon Gods out of their deck. Could take like Bedevil, <laughs> kind of thing. Let's take Dragon Gods. We'll play the Sahili. We will cut Fountain of Renewal. Get another Spyglass in here. I guess maybe they have, I'll just keep a couple. I'll just keep a couple Kai's Rats in here. They could have, you know, like War Boss and that kind of stuff, sideboard. Reasonable hand, hit our land drops, draw some cards with the Guild Globes. Looks like Sahili won has Sahili won two Guild Globes. It looks like at least. this out early so we can start flipping it. Don't know if we really necessarily need to scry upkeep. The best card we could probably find would be Thought Erasure anyway. Oh, hey, look at that. We found Thought Erasure. Bedevil. Alright, so either Bedevil kill treasure map or we have to deal with this Ravager. Which dealing with Ravager is a pain, to be honest. So we'll, we'll just get rid of the Ravager. Yes, I'd like that card. Put thoughtfulness before action.
help to cast duress here and not not save duress. Let's cry to the bottom. That's kind of silly, right? Hmm. Darn it. Well, I guess I wouldn't have this, but... I'm not sure why Deckmaster is not working for you. It should. They're being really patient on on those discard spells. Yeah, treasure map's a good one. All right, so I want to play Tazaret. I have to use all my artifacts to do it. All my treasures. Is that even worth it? I mean, if they if they find another play, if they find a planeswalker removal spell, basically, then I'll feel really bad. Um, yeah, it does get to rest otherwise, but. I have the three treasures that draw cards, right? Like these, these are going to turn into three cards here. Um, Oh yeah, my, my opponent's definitely going to be casting Discard here. Right, I don't get to actually draw a card with that. All right, maybe I should have played Tezzeret. Yeah, Narset is a pain. The good news is they don't have any lands, so even though they probably have like a lot of good interaction, they don't have any lands over there. I kind of want the land myself. Hey, what's up, Gonads? You're welcome. Glad you're enjoying the sweet games over here. They miss? That must have been just all their lands there. Oh, they haven't been seeing lands. Sub number 16 on the day. Four away from our second sub goal. Y'all are awesome. All right, so plan here. Do a little scrying with the treasure map. Draw a card with treasure cove. Also go and get a basic land. 
get put this Ugin back up in here. I'm gonna draw my card first before scrying to get more information about my scry. Alright, upkeep scry. Get the last basic out of the deck. Transform those. Yeah, for a donation deck, uh, just all you have to do is just, you know, send me a link of the deck. Um, and I, I just save it. Uh, you know, like this is this is a very convenient place to put a, a link of a deck. But yeah, you just it's just a twenty dollar donation. You just um, tell me what day you want me to play the deck, <clears throat> and what time slot first, second, third, or fourth. Uh, every every day, every time slot is open. I don't have any donation decks in the queue right now, and so it's easy as that. Yeah, this Narset is a pain. Another Narset, a Liliana, Bedevil, and a Ravager. Ravager is going to be a pain. Maybe it's just said Ravager. So what do we have? So there's four Ravagers... One Ugin, two Kefnet. There's no counter spells. There's a bunch more discard. They basically have one one elder spell. They have a third bedevil and a contempt. Their deck's kind of just. Kind of just lands. <laughs> oh yeah, and then they have, yeah they have the eldest reborn as well. Where my deck over here, I should be pretty close to being out of lands. Well, I'm not really that close to being out, but three, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess I've technically only gone through ten lands. Because all those other ones that we scryed to the bottom. Of course, we don't have to worry about like the 4-4 dealing damage to us because of the Spires of Araska. I could go Mystic Forge to try to cast more things. I could just go with this Meteor Golem to blow up Bolas. They got I could go God Pharaoh statue. That certainly just gets bedeviled, but that that takes the bedevil out of their hands. 
That's really not that bad. So this thing probably gets bedeviled too, though. We'll just take this thing. Speaking of good ones, whew, let's get this Ugin off the top. Gotta manually tap, because Auto Tapper wants to tap all my, my good lands. Alright, so now you cost zero. I can tap those two, that's fine. You cost two. I have faced worse than the likes of you. I want you to kill. You kill this thing. This be gone, interloper. You go grab. I will reach this. this. Yeah, my opponent attacking doesn't do anything for my opponent because the spires of Raska here that I'm leaving untapped. Awesome, good brother. Glad glad you're digging the deck so far. Yeah, this is a it's a pretty cool one. Should get the upkeep stop in there so we can upkeep scry with treasure map. They just have one other bedevil left in their deck. Ooh. So that means bedevil being used there means they're not killing. They are not. Killing this statue. That's what that means. So I could, I could have like Ugin kill Bolas, and then beat them up with like a Gil Globe or something. Kill Narset at least. You will not in this world. Oh, they had two Elders Reborns? Existed. 
I was going to tick up Ugin there. Protect against the other Eldritch Reborn. And then, yeah, I was just going to be able to, I was just going to name Narset since they had, they had like the other Narset in hand. So they weren't going to be able to like get that Narset to do anything. All right, one to know. Hey, Matu. <clears throat> yeah, that was a pretty beautiful game, wasn't it? That was a good one. So, as far as preemptive, in that case, with yeah, you shouldn't name Nicol Bolas the Arisen. You should just name Nicol Bolas the Ravager so that they can't transform, right? Like, if you name Ravager, they can't do the transform ability. So we could have just named Nicol Bolas the Ravager, not let Nicol Bolas transform ever, and we always have the the Maze of Ith land, the Spires of Horazka to shut down the attacking creature also. <laughs> yeah, God's Willing's not helping too much in this matchup. Alright, another Gil Globe or get Compass in play. Just Gil Globe. Uh, actually, that song has like a, a long ending. Ow. This Rhythm of the Wild, though, that's going to, like, we, we may die because of this Rhythm of the Wild, certainly. You know, like, whenever I'm playing Sorcerer Speed Removal like this, haste. Like, this is, this is like, the perfect matchup for, for, for Rhythm of the Wild. I may be dying here. We can have Ugin can destroy it. Tezzeret can gain life. Stop. But if they don't, if they only have four mana creatures that are super, that are, uh, dang, with a lot of power, we're just going to be losing. So they, they didn't even discard any cards in their hand, so like their hand's just golden. Every exploit ripples through time. Oh now hey Zenther. GG's. Yeah, that was a that was a fun match there. GG's. I'm one mana short from one land short from flipping compass. Uh we just had one more land. Oh well compass doesn't even stop spellbreaker anyway, so doesn't matter. Yeah, this is <sighs> this is tough. I do. I am uh, admittedly not very good against Rhythm of the Wild. We'll take out Spyglass. Get this Founder Renewal in here. Could place a Healy to try to get Chump Blockers. I guess. Probably trim a Mystic Forge. It's a little slow here. Um, would I rather play Legion's End over anything else? Hey, we got a donation. Fiery Aspen. Tomorrow, fourth slot. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much there, Fiery Aspen. No, I don't think Legion Zen's going to hit much. It'll hit mana creatures, right? And so, like, maybe maybe they have, like, a hand that's relying on the mana creatures. Like, it, that will slow them down. Like, 
like this car car and the great creator is really not doing much like these cards like you know getting meteor golem like that's so slow i'll just play legion's ends instead of that car and the great creator no nah, I, I can't ri i can't ego rhythm of the wild i, I can't do that too proud All right, Guild Globe. Draw some cards. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> that was about as good of hand as we could have, honestly. We curved out well. You know, we had Guild Globe, Guild Globe, and then we had we had Kaya's Wrath on four, Kaya's Wrath on five, Ugin on six, and we are dead. So this could be a tough matchup. Admittedly. Speaking of good hand, this one the this one's good too though. With three artifacts already in play, we can have Karn minus and make a four four Karnstruct. That's a pretty good sized Karnstruct. It's a good blocker. Until you have evil cannot withstand a righteous army. Yep, you can find the Rakdos aggro deck list here. A 5-5? Five five? That's even bigger. Ugh. Man. Green, green, red, haste. Dot deck. It's really good against me. The choices we make reveal who we are. I don't I don't like this matchup. I don't like this one. Hey sandbox. Ugh. Farewell and thank you for the lesson. Should I be taking up Ugin? Recklessness and fear. I kind of feel like I should. It just it helps me. It helps buy me some time. You know, them attacking Ugin get, helps me find another Kaya's Wrath. Cinder vines. <laughs> Talk about a card I, I definitely don't want to face. The cinder vines. Holy moly, I forgot about that thing. Together, we'll create great things, you and I. Um. He just then gets rid of Marauding Raptor. That's probably worth it. We'll we'll put that over here. Zero mana. Ooh, that's a good one. Draw that. Thank you. Treasure map. Zero mana. Thank you. All right. So maybe this Mystic Forge. Okay, maybe we need to work more towards Sahili. Maybe this Mystic Forge Ugin Sahili thing is kind of great. Whew. 
Oh my gosh. This is great. We are going off. What a turn. And now we have the Spires of Roska. What a turn. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Zeet. Yeah, like, look at our opponent's side there. Like, that's just seven. Just made seven, one, one. So, with that turn, with we had, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had seven mana, right? We cast three plus four, so seven. And then eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We cast 18 mana worth of stuff that turn. That's pretty good. All right, we're just going to fog this Cavalier of Thorns. Double block the Spellbreaker. And block this thing a bunch. Yeah, we're playing modern and standard today. We're playing affinity over here. All right. Okay, I need to see the screen. What do we have? Ah, a thought erasure over there. All right. Well, we're, we'll start with thought erasure. I guess I could. I guess I could just Kaya's Wrath here. Actually, maybe we should have just done that. I guess I could. All right, maybe I should have just done that. That's that's just the thing to do. Is just play Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, the Cavalier doesn't really get anything good back. That's fine. They get charging monstrous horror. Cinder vines. All right, so I missed out on one, one, one by not Kaya's wrathing first. Like I could have a one, one now with the thought erasure. need the Spires of Araska up. Um, I'm not sure. It's it's probably one of those two, Vampires or Scapeshift. Yeah, we still had the ability to Ugin, make a token with Ugin there. All right, so Cinder Vines is, like, unbeatable. All right. So we got that game because our deck went crazy. Deck went absolutely crazy. That's a good clip right there. Post that in the highlights, too, of the Discord channel. Our deck went absolutely crazy. Are we going to win games, game number three? Probably not. This is this is a tough matchup. Maybe Hawkeye can get us there, though. Can you do it, Hawkeye? Give us another really good hand. All right, here we go. So we can't beat Cinder Vines. We can't beat Rhythm of the Wild. Can't beat all those big hasty creatures. That's like what our opponent's deck is completely.
That doesn't mean we're not gonna try. All right, cool. Take care, good brother. Okay. Instant speed again. This adds mana and ramps them to these. I take Vivian though. I gotta get rid of the instant speed and the card advantage. Tomri doesn't really add card advantage; just adds adds mana. Yeah, I think four. I, I, yeah, I really like four mana Domri. Oh no, not Rhythm of the Wild. No, not oh, Rhythm of the Wild. That's bad. Well, to be honest, these these things already had haste. At least that thing has haste. That thing has haste when you have more mana. But just their future creatures are gonna have haste now too. I gotta keep on getting land drops, basically. I gotta get this Thaumatic Compass online. Dang, I only have one other basic. Oh yeah, because I, I ditched one. Are you kidding me? That thing's a 7-6? Am I supposed to be 7-6s? This thing's even bigger, then. It's gonna be eight power. And they activate it nine power. All right, well, GG. I just play. I've lived with animals my entire life. Explains a lot, actually. I play spells. I take damage. I draw Thought Erasure here. No. This Cavalier of Night just kills me. All right, so that was a rough matchup, but we got to do one. We got we had one really awesome game there, where our deck went crazy. Mystic Forge with a bunch of free spells. And. Sahili in play, so we were getting one ones with each one. That was pretty cool. No, our opponent's deck's not necessarily bad against every other deck. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's the best. They're, those Gruul decks, like, especially their deck, beats up on control, really. Yeah, it's a control killer. And just just really beat up on my, on my deck. All right, so yeah, we just didn't have they, we couldn't find a an opponent there, so just this is a draw. Like we didn't actually have an opponent. All right, here we go. I don't know the card rewards for this season. Does anybody have like a link to what they are? Does anybody know? I just have deductive reasoning to that I've been using to believe that 
or that I used to believe that Agent of Treachery is one. But I'm unclear if that's actually true. Because Agent of Treachery in the store just says it's a season reward. So unfortunately, looks like we're playing against Nexus, or, you know, at least, at the very least, we're playing against a deck where Kaiser Rat's not any good, and we have two Kaiser Rats in our hand. So this is unfortunate. Um, I mean, I do kind of need more land, but I don't need, like, tons more land, and we'll, we have a good chance to draw lands anyway. We're probably not any good against Nexus. Come to think of it. I didn't really build the deck to try to beat Nexus. I guess I got, what, three on more egos in the sideboard? So there we go. That's what I got. I don't want them to, to know about Field of Ruin really before they as Kanta. So if I go Tezzeret, they just bounce Tezzeret. If I go Mystic Forge, they probably bounce the treasure map. All right, that's fine. So that's, you know, like, Tezzeret, they would have bounced the Tezzeret anyway, but now I get to actually activate the treasure map. Zikman. Thanks, Zikman. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Hone your prowess. You are a rock star. Thankfully, my opponent hasn't really been doing too much either here. I def uh, think, think next turn is the turn to play. Field of Ruin. That's a good one. I guess that can just kill Ascanta right now. I mean, I could kill Narset, but I'd rather kill Ascanta. Presence alone will guide you to so bathe in ghost fire. Hmm. 
the second Mystic Forge exiles another card. I was thinking the second Mystic Forge isn't going to do anything, but I guess it does exile another card from the top of the library. I probably should have kept that. I kind of did that a little too quickly, but we'll see if we have any more turns or not. Well, no, they have they have infinite turns. I can only it's I don't get to untap my spires of Araska each one of their turns. So it's not like my spires of Araska like if they have the one in, one win con the spires doesn't check the doesn't check their win con. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. No land to put into play? Ugh, so those are all spells? Gross. Guild Globe. Oh yeah, we don't get to draw any more cards. That's a good one, though. Um, Ether itself serves me. Trying to keep Field of Ruin active. So satisfying. Even though we're going to lose this game, that's so, still worth it for that Tezzeret Claw. But how much, how many cards they're going to draw? Like they're going to find Nexus here, and this this should be over. Like I'd have to get really lucky with like all their Nexuses being down at the bottom of the library to to not come out ahead here, or sorry, to come out ahead here. But the claw makes it worth it. That was fun. The land fights for us. No tail should be discarded. So I don't have the Field of Ruin for that, but I also have Field of Ruin. Like, the Field of Ruin can take out the Escanta. And, like, if I Field of Ruin the, the Breeding Pool, they still have mana for Escanta anyway.
Well, I put up a fight. That's it with Tamio. All right, so one more to go. Coming on in, Sahili. Um, I do want all these spy glasses, but like spy glasses, very good here. But you know, I want Karn to be able to grab spy glasses too. Maybe I just kind of have three spy glasses in here. So if we cut Kaya's Wrath and Fountain of Renewal, that would give us this. Oh, I, I don't need Thaumatic Compass. I guess Thaumatic Compass did get me an extra land, I suppose. If I don't play Thaumatic Compass, I probably play the Mystic Forge. Yeah, like I kind of so I kind of want some artifacts still to grab with Karn in the sideboard. But like like Spyglass, Mystic Forge, Statue and Golem are all okay. They're not spectacular, but they're all okay. I'll just keep the other ones in there. Alright, we got our one good card in our deck. I'm just kidding. We have so many sweet cards in our deck. We got the best one for this matchup. Let's see what they got going on over here. So I'm going to name Tamio. <clears throat> I do like how they kept in Root Snare. So just, should I just take all the Nexuses or should I just take Nissa? Like, if I take Nissa, will they have another win condition? Or do I just say Nexus? I should just say Nexus. Aww. Opponent let me, didn't let me see their deck. You think they're going to have Ooze? I guess if they do have ooze, maybe I should keep a couple Kaya's Rats in instead of those Thaumatic Compasses that aren't very good. They do have ooze. And plus, we could Kaya's Wrath away some Nissa lands too. You never know. That's not going to be good enough. This is better. I could put back the Mystic Forge. Like the Gil Globe could like help me hit a land drop that I need to. No, we have treasure map and everything. All right. Okay, good. Not not uh, that that one green card that I hate. Oh no! 
We gotta take Tamiya. I wanted to take Wilderness Reclamation, but we can't take Wilderness Reclamation. <clears throat> <laughs> that was their card in hand, too. All right, what do they have to win? They have a Shifting Ceratops. One Ceratops, one Krasis, one Nyssa. Two Krasis. Two Ceratops. Three Ceratops. Three Ceratops, two Krasis. whole bunch of Tamios. As far as things to name for Spyglass, we got Tamio. As Kanta and Nissa. Memorial to Genius, too, though. on starting to try to flip this thing and get lands and stuff. They just have so much mana right now with these Wilderness Reclamations. I don't love where we're at. I don't know why they haven't popped uh, these Memorial to Geniuses. Getting these thumbnails up in here. Yay, thumbnails. That's convenient. Spyglass is good. That can shut off, like, you know, Tamio. Um. So I could play Kai's Wrath and Spyglass right now. It would take all my treasures and then leave me with five mana. I don't think I need to do that. Let's just spy glass. See what's going on over here. That doesn't, I didn't, that was just a waste of a card. All right, so we saw a lot more Tamios. Than Nyssa. Yep, <clears throat> I I have the card styles because I paid for them. They're expensive, but do it for the stream. Okay. Yes, please. So I could just spend. I could play. 
I could kill the Ceratops with Ugin instead of Kaya's Wrath. No, let's just do Kaya's Wrath because we can have Ugin kill like Nissa or something else. So we'll crack this treasure, see if we draw a land to play. Which we did, very good. Good, no creature, very good. I don't think they have negate in their deck. I don't remember seeing negate. I could have missed it though. I wasn't really pay I wasn't really looking for negate as much. Do not defy the designs of an elder. Truth lies beyond vision. <clears throat> we'll get the we'll get the claw going next turn. Good. We had a blocker here for the Nissa. They did have negate in their deck? Okay. Oh, no, I wasn't really looking for negate. Nope. I do want blocks. Okay, so I'm going to, I mean, I wanted to, to claw, like, the Nissa's dead. We gotta deal with this 3-3, though. The Karn is a pretty nice draw step to give me a good blocker for the forest there. Um... This... I could have just killed myself if they draw Shifting Ceratops right here. I guess no, I'm, I don't die to Shifting Ceratops, do I? I go to one. I will defend my allies. Awaken. I guess I could just play new Ugin and tick up. That's actually a pretty good idea. Let's just do that. Yeah. I am ancient and wise. Heed my advice. The fabric of the multiverse obeys me. Yep, next turn we're going to Tezzeret, and we good. Allow me to introduce you to a friend of mine. Don't tap the... Don't tap the treasure cove. I am Khan. Well, that is true that if I just play the Tezzeret, then these then these Karns are free. Forgot about the affinity part here. So that's zero mana now. So we're so basically everything's zero mana. All these colorless things are zero mana now between Ugin and, and Tezzeret. I battle for the forces of good. Like that's zero. Everything's just zero mana. All planeswalkers, all my other artifacts. I guess specifically Mystic Forge is like the only thing that's not zero mana. 
All right, we already got Tamio shut down. We killed Nissa. Um, Memorial of Genius. They've already cracked a couple. I'm gonna name Shifting Ceratops. It's kind of weird. They have one Shifting Ceratops left. Now they cannot give it haste. That doesn't matter. Um, I, I guess. Blast Zone? Do they have a Blast Zone in here? They gotta have Blast Zone, right? Let's name Blast Zone. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mystic Forge. Let's activate you. Mm. I guess you still cost blue, blue. I don't have blue, blue. Alright, let's tick you up. A curious choice. I don't want to stop casting stuff. Are we? Oh, here. Let's. We got Scry. Let's Scry. Ugh. I guess we're done casting stuff. All right. Just Tez for nine. Bzz. Don't you see? You have already lost. I could have minus the car and it made a ten, I suppose. I was, I was trying to, trying to go bigger. Man, our opponent is shut down too. Between the spy glasses, the unmoored ego. Like they have like hydroid crisis as one card in their deck. That's. <laughs> There you go, they found it. There's a one card in their deck that does anything. Well, they found it. I mean, I, I still have the Ugin that kills it, and like they're they're dead to like, I don't know, the claw. Like the claw's gonna kill them. We're gonna have 13 power there. All right, a lot easier when you unmoor Ego uh, Nexus away, that's for sure. Played Unmoored Ego. Both of those games, and it was a lot easier. <laughs> Man, this deck's cool when it gets going. Yeah, good brother donated for this deck. He, um, he just donated, for, asked me to make, <clears throat> asked me to make a Mystic Forge deck, and this is what I came up with. Because that's that's something you can also do. You can donate, um, for me to make specific decks, you know, built around whatever. And so that's. That's what we have here. We have our Mystic Forge deck. All right, a slow hand, but our deck's a slow deck. We're hoping we're playing. We're hoping we're not playing against aggro. Hoping we're against control. Brineborn Cutthroat. Well, that's not good for me. We are not beating Simic Flash. <laughs> Stream Decker is still showing Rakdos aggro. Hmm. Let's see if I can fix that. Gosh. Nick, so I could pay two life to get the scry with the, the map. I'll just play the globe instead. It's the claw of the Tezzy, it's the thrill of the fight. Da, 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 da. To the challenge of our rivals. I like it. Good lyric there. 
<laughs> That's true. Got to have a better attitude to try to win this. But just like, you know, we really struggled against uh, the Rhythm of the Wild also. Same kind of thing here. Uh, the instant speed stuff. Very tough for us to beat. So if this is land, land in hand, I could have like Karn make a Karnstruct that blocks Cutthroat. You know, that's super unlikely. I feel like if this if this was land, land in hand, they would have just played Forest so they could draw a card with Spectral Sailor, right? Like they wouldn't just play a Breeding Pool. Like they had to have a counter spell or, and or something they can play on play for for that amount of mana. So I'll just go Dub's treasure map. Oh, okay. Yeah, on summon. Yeah, we're not... Just kept on top really quick. Not a good sign. Last time I played Paper, he got so wrecked by Simic Flash. Yeah, this is this. Is, I mean, Simic Flash is a really tough deck to beat when you're playing expensive sorcery speed deck, like I'm playing here, like a very a very slow methodical sorcery speed deck, which is what I have here. Th this is exactly what the the Flash deck is built to beat. Like, right? Like, I don't. So we we ran into two really difficult matchups here in this league, which is gonna happen. And I have Legion's End is my only card here. I could try the Sublime Artificer, I suppose. Um, we don't need Spyglass, and we don't really need we don't really need any of these things in the sideboard. So I guess I could just cut the Great Creator and play Sahili. Uh, maybe play a Meteor Golem over the Third Forge. Nah, I kind of like Forge more. Get us those extra spells. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, even, unless my opponent gets really unlucky, we're not we're not winning this even post sideboard. We don't have enough here. But still, uh, even with that being said, still certainly this has been a fun deck to play. And this is one that, you know, can, can certainly hold its own in some of the longer matchups as we've seen. And even like the combo, the combo matchups, you know, with having the Unmoored Egos in there. But Simic Flash, just it's not going to work out for us. And, uh, <clears throat> and Gruel anti-control creature, not going to work out so much either. All right, so my hope is next turn to Thought Erasure plus Legion's End, the Brimeborn Cutthroat. Be able to double up on the spells there. Oh, no Brimeborn Cutthroat.
Well, I think I should probably just activate these instead of playing something. I think I should... That's actually... I guess I'll just play that. Crown Renewal is not that important to... to resolve, I don't think. If they counter found a renewal there, though, I would get to Thought Erasure and see if we can take a Night Pack Ambusher. But like we're probably good. Like we need to like try to save Thought Erasure, like for having that plus like Kaya's Wrath or you know something like that. Try to help it. We need this to help protect some other spell that we need to resolve. Just don't know what that spell is yet. Um. Treasure map's kind of fine here. Like these treasure maps are good because they give us a lot of mana and extra cards and stuff. Lots of mana is good against Flash. We have a very careful Flash player, one that's somewhat distracted. Well, they just didn't do anything. Didn't even draw a card of Spectral Sailor. Maybe they're worried about instant speed removal on my side. Yes, please. Activate these things. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't been playing any modern recently. I am a... I'm an MTG Arena streamer. Hmm. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. What is Legion's end now? Actually, yeah, I should just I should just Legion's end right here. Worst case scenario, because that still keeps some four mana. Wait, wait, wait. Haha. -ha. They did that during my turn. They didn't do it during end step. Hooray. That's worth two treasures.
Get some more cards up in here. Refill my hand. They got five cards over there. I want five cards. I want to be able to match up. No wolves. No wolves. No wolves. Just right. Ugh. Good wolves. Find another Kai's Wrath in here. At least that wasn't Fail of Summer, at least. Hmm. So I have to shock and use two treasures to play another Karn? I should not have kept this Tazeret. I regret that right now. Alright, Caesar, have a good night. If, if the minus would actually kill the ambusher, I would do that, but it doesn't. So I'll just dig, see if they, see if they spend a turn, you know, see if Karn buys me another turn, basically. And cool, there was no Kaya's Wrath there. That's the card I really want to draw, of course. Kai's Wrath. I will be better prepared next time. I will be better prepared. Perfect.
Hooray! We still alive. We're not very alive. I should not have kept this card a long time ago whenever I kept it. What? Why didn't they just do that first? Like, they could have just top decked Negate and could have countered it. They were going to do that at end step anyway. Dice Cry stuff to the bottom. A Mystic Forge. A Mystic Forge would be a really good draw right now. Alright, well they kept that card on top pretty quickly. So let's... Make them shuffle. And shuffle that Mystic Forge plus that other land back up in here. lands. Yeah, Guild Globe's good. It's an artifact cycle. Okay. Another good one. So that means that whenever we cast stuff, we make 1-1, one, one, so don't have to worry about stuff getting countered. My creations are things of beauty. Cool. Hey, Blub. Come on, deck. Draw some spells. We want some lands over here and some spells over here. Oh, that's a good one. That... That's a good one. That'll play. That'll play. I'm, I'm hoping they have Cutthroat. I'm hoping they have Brineborn Cutthroat. They haven't seen a Brineborn Cutthroat yet this game. I think it's... It's a good time for them to have a cutthroat. Yes, exile that land, please. So that's that's big game to have that resolve for us. All right, they kept that one on top. Entrancing Melody, the 1-1 one, one token. Spectral Sailor. So they know they kept that card on top. 
I don't know why my opponent didn't play that in step. I don't know. Maybe they wanted to make sure they had protection for it. It is definitely a card to need a wrath away. Right? Like, it, it, uh, you know, drawing all the cards and everything, it's definitely something that it deserves a wrath. That's a great one for us. Wow, well, Thaumatic Compass is good. Because it flips and and everything. That is a really good one for us. Still a bunch of lands. Uh, I don't want this to get countered. I think I can wait a little bit. I don't think I need to play it right now. Yeah, we we can make we we could turn the gold the guild globe into Mystic Forge with Sahili's minus. That is true. We could do that. Maybe we'll do that this next turn. I don't even know what lands they're tapping. Those two. All right, that's fine. We can tap those. Twenty two in the deck. I don't actually really need to Kaya's Wrath here. I'm gonna do it to try to get a counter out of their hand for the Tezzeret. Alright, now hopefully their other card's not also a counter spell. Do not tap like that. What kind of awful tapping is that? Resolve. Resolve. Yeah. You're a fool if you think you can outmaneuver me. Okay. So we know that's going to resolve. So we know that's good to go. So target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact. Let's do that. Just in case. Some lessons for you all. Ooh, there we go. How much do you cost? You shouldn't cost any mana, right? Actually, you should just cost zero, right? Yeah, just cost zero. It's just free. Free. Free, free, free. We are but motes in a vast multiverse. Uh, might as well just kill this ambusher. I suppose. Alright, 
We've got to get that Legion Zend out of here. Ugh. Ran out of colorless things. All right, claw time. You should just concede. Yeah, because Ugin would make like all the other, you know, two mana artifacts that we have in here free. Tezzeret made makes the Ugins and Karns free. Uh, it's pretty great. It's pretty great deck building. That was a pretty epic turn. That was... Yeah, the, the compass does shuffle the deck, so I could have I could have activated the compass to shuffle, but I decided just to have like the spires of Araska available here. All right, free. Come on, opponent, let me claw again. I mean, I guess I could just claw for the win here. I, I should just do that. Let's claw. Bzz. My artifacts give them strength. Man, the claw is sweet. I guess I could have just kept on doing stuff to try to run my opponent out of time. I just looked there. They're like five minutes below me as far as time goes. What if I unmoored ego away like the the wolves? What if I just like unmoored ego the wolves? Is that a thing? That's probably not a thing, right? Yeah, like the Frilled Mystics, or... What would I rather... What would I play that over? Play that over, like, Guild Globe? But I don't know. Guild Globe's cool. I'm just gonna keep this the same. I'm not gonna do that. No, the Fountain was pretty good there. Like during that game, we, you know, we got to, we got to uh, cycle the fountain, but we gained a good amount of life. As you know, we saw we, we ended up at like nine or whatever, but we gained like five or six life from that fountain. Fountain's good against like, spectral sailor. You know, it's just like pinging you for to death, and you just got a fountain going. That's what we had there that game. <laughs> Something cheap for Sahili. Yeah, they're at twelve fifty one. Maybe yeah, I guess I could have just kept on playing stuff and seeing how long they took. I'm at eighteen twenty-three. Could have just kept my turn going forever. See if they until they were Concede that last turn. Rakdos Aggro ended really well. Yeah, I just played the four matches. I played some longer games with it. And I knew that this deck was going to take a while. <laughs> as we've seen here. Um, so I just played the four matches. But it, it played pretty well. And I was very happy with it. So while Thought Erasure likely gets countered on turn two, if it gets, you know, if it does get countered, that means they're not going Brineborn Cutthroat. Well then. That Veil of Summer card's messed up. I don't know who printed that. Should be ashamed of themselves. I'm just kidding. I, I mean, I, I use Veil somewhere all the time. <laughs> yep, this is my build. The challenge was to build a deck around Mystic Forge. 
since this is what I came up with with that. Cool, that resolves. I'm gonna just activate treasure map here over um, over playing Guild Globe. So I wanna flip the treasure map um, to get to the seven mana to flip the compass. Is my best card in my deck, basically. Your favorite deck's Kalia and Friends. That one, I've been really, really liking that one too. Kalia is a really fun card to play. Hmm. So to Kaya's Wrath, or no? I have another Gil Globe set up. I mean, my opponent also has Negate in their deck. They have a bunch of Negates in their deck. So I could go like Mystic Forge next turn, and if they counter that, then Kaya's Wrath. Ooh, that's that's pretty good. Then I don't have Treasure Cove open here. Is flipped. Awesome, three man. Yeah, glad you're li really liking the Kalia deck too. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's like I could Mystic Forge, it gets countered. I use one token to play Ugin, which that is worth it. Yeah, our opponent's living the rough life there with just one blue source. I don't want that card. I will take that one, though. Ugh. I never tap correctly. Uh, it's been, like, the most annoying thing, having to all having to auto-tap, or having to tap our lands. Um, I don't know what that bookmark thing means does it mean enter the battlefield this turn maybe that's what it means enter the battlefield this turn <clears throat> i'm not sure this should be fun yeah this is asper colorless yep We 
we have Thought Erasure, Kaya's Wrath, and Tezzeret as our only colored spells, but the rest it's colorless. It's built around Mystic Forge, trying to play a lot of colorless stuff with it. This one, I have this one Saheeli in the sideboard. I came in here. Thanks, Drax. Yes, I'd like to play a zero mana Thaumatic Compass, thank you. And a zero mana one of those. Down, down, down. Uh, you. Pay a life, get rid of that. Two mana? That sounds good enough for me. Ah, I tapped my Spires of Araska. Evil must not be tolerated. <sighs> I need to watch out for that. Um, some solutions must be built. Do I have your attention now? Boom. I could pop the the fountain renewal and draw, but I'm I'm gonna just save this here. Wish I had both spires, but <laughs> that is a satisfying nine nine crunch there. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, this is this is a fun deck. These cards, I always liked like Tezzeret, like building Tezzeret Master of the Bridge decks. I'm hoping we get like good artifacts here. So yeah, I'd, I'd want to just try to make like these things lethal. Basically, I want to make. I'm keeping the Founder Renewal, seeing if we can get them to lethal. Oh, that's a good one. I guess I could respond to that by. Respond to that here. Exile. In case we got a colored spell that I wanted. Um, guess it didn't really matter.
Sure. Sabotage. I like to think fast. Oh, I guess I guess I can do you. Yeah, like they'd have to chump block both twelve twelves. I guess I could take up the car and see what see what we get. Wow. That was a long match. We are three and one. We are still at it. We beat Simic Flash. We did it. We didn't think we were going to. Thought for sure that we were, we had lost. I was like all, all ready to to put two and two for the deck and and everything. But wow, what a showing! Mystic Forge certainly helped us out a ton there, giving us extra cards to play where our opponent couldn't counter everything. Um, yeah, no instant speed removal. Um, no instant speed cards. I don't think I have. A, I don't think I have a single instant in the deck. Do I? No, I don't. So just no instant speed cards when we beat Simic Flash. No, like one mana cards. Wow, that was that was a tough one, but we did it. Worked hard for it. Yeah, we just just a bunch of artifacts. I couldn't handle it. Hey, Paragrip. It's hard to mulligan turn two thought erasure. Escape shift. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah. Probably still escape shift. Yeah. It's gotta be escape shift, right? Looking like it. Watery Grave does... They have Field of the Dead. No Field of Ruin. Watery Grave does let these things come into play untapped. The iso Isolate Chapels, that is. Um, I don't need to keep my sixth land, though, right? Yeah, their hand's not any good, but their hand top decks really, really well. You know, they have all the mana, and all they have to do is just top deck. Like, that's that's a good hand to have. It's like, my hand's not... Speaking of hands, they're not good. My hand is not good. I'd like to see a four mana card here. I'm really glad we didn't keep that land. Dang. Yeah, we have a lot of good sideboard against Cape Shift. Specifically, three on more goes is the big thing. If I find uh, Karn the Great Creator, if I draw that card... I can, you know, double minus two and grab both Amulet of Safekeepings and make the, make tokens be zero power. Well, yeah, we're not, we're not a creature deck, so we don't need Steel Overseer.
just going to be cracking this fountain renewal. No, I have I have the one Sahili in the sideboard that can pump out tokens. That's that's it. Like and then like you know, Karn can, but Karn's pretty slow. And Karn's tokens you don't need. You definitely don't need uh whatever it's called with Karn's tokens. No, there's just the one Sahili in the sideboard. His main deck were Kaya's Rathen. All right, Ugin, a good draw. We'll activate the Thaumatic Compass. Here to go dig for... Go grab another land. <laughs> that Fountain of Renewal Water is A+. Plus. Have you ever, like, wondered if smart water is so smart? Why is it still just, like, water instead of something better? Whatever. Tried asking smart water any questions. It doesn't answer. Doesn't seem very smart. Good call here by the opponent, not sacrificing all of their lands, keeping keeping lands in their deck. It's a smart play. <laughs> smart water. Yeah, smart water doesn't even wear glasses. <laughs> How smart could it be? <laughs> it's a pretty low water mark to hit. Keeping, keeping more lands in their deck is certainly, certainly a good call for the opponent. Because best case scenario for me is they like scape shift just tons of lands. They just don't have enough lands in their deck to get like more tokens and everything. But this gets them plenty. Gets them lethal. Well, lethal-ish. Whoa, scry to the bottom. Good, no land. I don't like that instant speed land stuff. So we'll make a 2-2 a two -two with Ugin next turn to, for a blocker. And we'll have the compass flip. Also. That's four creatures though there. I was hoping they'd only have two creatures. I was hoping they'd just have like a land drop. Four. That's a lot of creatures.
that was really good for us. Not hitting a land and also not blast zoning away the compass. I was definitely scared that my opponent was going to blast zone away the compass. I mean, I need to find more Kaiser ass though. You know, I got the four Kaiser ass. Got to find another one. How many lands? Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. This is land number twenty here. There's land number twenty. How many lands do Scape Shift decks usually play? Oh, they have Field of Ruin also. Bleh, I forgot about Field of Ruin on the Spires. Did you really like 29? So that's 20, so they have nine left. That's still a lot. <laughs> Looks like they didn't they didn't know what Spires did. Looking at that afterwards, like Okay. So let's start. Let's get in the Mystic Forge and play. <laughs> Immediately exile the land. Take a free treasure map, thank you. Free compass. Of course, we have to be worried about blast zone. Uh, scry. No! What is this auto tap? Why would they tap the spires of a Roscut? Oh, come on. You're killing me. Killing me, Spires of Orozco. Actual killing me. I will fight for my friends. I mean, I just tap tap my treasure map, and it just it just does it. Oh, say hello to my little friend. <sighs> Secrets. Manifest before you. So I kind of don't want to play this treasure map because of the blast zone. But I don't really care about Guild Globe doesn't do anything. Well, never mind. All right, don't worry about Blast Zone. We'd really love to have that Spires of Roska available. Because our other one's probably going to get... Like, why did they not take Ugin there? Like, what are they doing with that thing? Our other one's probably going to get Field of Ruined. Which I guess, which means I should just be saving these scries. It's possible my opponent forgot about, has forgotten about Field of Ruin. Which is good for me. Gone through so many lands. Yeah. 
What's up, Katie? It's just one ex so it's one extra damage to kill the rejuvenator. Take ten. If I get another blocker for next turn. Another Ugin. Free treasure map. Oh, give me that card. How do I draw a card? Can I draw a card? Do I have anything that draw actually draws a card? I could tick up on Ugin and just have that down to be able to kill with a blocker. I think that's probably the safest thing. Or, like, that's... Yeah, I'm going to make sure not to tap Spires. Because, um, yeah, I don't want to take up Karn. So let's take up Ugin. Ether itself serves me. Hey, other Karn. That Karn's great. No, don't tap Spires of Araska. Stupid deck. I will fight with you. My Tezzeret's not going to die now. Hmm. I don't really need this card. But like my 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 token that has the Tezzeret is not going to die now. Just sad. I don't really need that card either. Ooh, that's a good one. Do any things do anything? Some solutions must be built. Hmm. Robot power. Those robots are going to be a lot bigger next turn. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Darn it. Should have grabbed another spyglass and named Teferi instead of grabbing the amulet. Darn it. Should have done that. Because now they, they can bounce spyglass. Well, my opponent is not doing this correctly. They should they should bounce spyglass and then blast zone away all of these two drops. Like they could have killed everything here. All like all three of these treasure maps. Speaking of treasure map, upkeep stop. All three treasure maps, the amulet. I guess that's about it, but could have got rid of all those.
I need to get this Tezzeret back. So we're going to be Kaya's Wrathing here. Grabbing this Tezzeret. And then killing our opponent. Yeah. So our, as long as our opponent doesn't have a counter spell, they're dead. So I would assume they don't have a counter spell. I think that's a pretty pretty safe assumption. Let's go Let's go check out what they got. I have like infinite mana right now, right? Yeah, I have infinite mana. Um, is there a good game? Game over? It's just not anything that says game. Walk the plank. That's a good one. <laughs> Time to walk the plank. Yeah, you can find all of my decks there. You can also see all the decks on the YouTube channel that has links to all the the decks too. Of course, this one that we're playing right now, uh, you'd have to go to the stream decker. Or you can find it there. I thought it is playing super slowly. I could draw this out a little bit, I guess. I could draw this out and just try to go for the win with time. This is game one. Out of three. Nah. Yeah, we're clawing. We'll get that bazap going. Tell me you're not impressed. We'll just we'll just end the game, but I honestly could just fiddle around and you know keep passing the turn back and all that kind of stuff and I don't know. But we'll get death by claw. Bzz. Because technically, my my best chance of winning the game is is just taking a long time and like the, winning the match overall. Because we are we had that game locked up, so I I could have just gone and like spyglassed to fairy, I guess, instead of the walk the plank. All right, ego, lead to send. Let's get an extra spyglass main. The basement. This is the way it is. What am I? What am I sideboarding out though? Definitely one one Mystic Forge, the Guild Globes. Fountain can honestly save me. If I cut the Guild Globes, I should probably cut one other Mystic Forge. Just reduced our colorless. Wait, I better have sideboarded. Did it sideboard? I hope it did. I think I should I think I should take out a thaumatic compass. But too late. No, definitely do not want to cut Thought Erasure. Because grabbing like Hydroid Crisis or Scape Shift, like grabbing some of those cards can 
can make a huge difference. And if, if they have Teferi and they have like the instant speed, um, gosh, having a Tezzeret and an Ugin, that's maybe we should trim down on some of these. Treasure map is good. Besides that, like these other cards, like aren't going to beat Scape Shift immediately. Like I need, I need interaction. But like with treasure map, I need like land drops and interaction. So that's kind of tough. I think I want a Mulligan because like th these three cards aren't doing anything at all. Ugin, Tezzeret, Thalmatic Compass. Those, those just aren't doing anything at all. Well. <laughs> Looks like I needed to take more time. I know my, my mana is a little rough with... I have two lands in my deck that don't cast Kaya's Wrath, Basic Island and Field of Ruin, out of my 26. So I have, I have 24 towards Kaya's Wrath. Field of Ruin's worth it for this matchup, though. The Field of Ruin's like my 26 land, and I'm playing, you know, a few basics because of Thaumatic Compass. Playing one of each basic. It's not like my color requirements are too difficult. I just have like the the random Kaiseras that are though. Yeah, our opponent does play very, very slow. They got to win this game and then the next game in four, 14 minutes. I have 20 minutes, 20 and a half. Oh, that's a great draw. Oh, I shouldn't have played the Field of Ruin, should I? No, I shouldn't have played Field of Ruin. I'm three turns away from, no, I'm three turns away from Kai's Wrathing. I should have shocked in this Watery Grave. Uh, I guess I get to activate Field of Ruin though. All right, they scry to the top. I'll blow that up. That'll let me. I mean, let me cast Kaiser at next turn now if I need to. Just have the seven there. So they just get se they get seven zombies. They can only get one field of the dead out.
So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight plus seven. So that's already so that's fifteen of their twenty-nine lands. So we're doing pretty good there. We're getting a lot of their lands out of there. Leonidaskin. Welcome back. Thanks for that resub there. Oh, and you're sub number 18. We're only two subscribers away from getting this other sub goal towards our 12-hour stream. So if you've been enjoying the stream and would like to help support me as a full-time streamer, consider hitting that sub button there. There's the link also. You get access to all 22 of those really cool emotes to be able to use in chat. Hmm. I think that's probably a pretty good one. Teferi! Thanks for that resub there, Teferi. Alright, we're only one subscriber away now. So in order to cast... In order to cast Thought Erasure here, I, I do have to use my treasures. I could just... Could just take this. Forget about that. Hey, Hawkeye, you are the best kitty on the radio. Is it better to name Krasis than Field of the Dead? No, probably not, right? It's probably just Field of the Dead. Okay, why are you messing up my my headphones? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, my headphones. No, don't beat up my headphones. My headphones. Go get them. Ah, uh, should have named Krasis. Definitely thought about naming Krasis. Well, if we draw Thought Erasure here. Thought Erasure. Twamp. Alright, I... I think we're going to lose this game, honestly. I kind of think we're going to lose this game. Because, like, they get to, you know, play a really big crisis, and then also play a land, get another token, 
I have to kill the the Krasis. I'm taking a bunch of damage from these things. Like we need to draw another Kyo's Wrath. They're leaving up one for Vale of Summer. Yeah, we need to draw Kai's Wrath here. I'll feel a lot better about this if we draw Kai's Wrath. No, you never name Scape Shift. Never, never do that. land just name name field of the dead and hydroid crisis those are the cards in name never name scape shift curiosity and wonder drive civilization not petty wars what just I wasted a can create thanks for wasting that veil of summer I... just throwing it in your graveyard Cause yeah, well, yeah, well, one scape shift. Yeah, they could they could make nine zombies with a scape shift. That's less impactful than what the other field of the deads can do, um, and what uh, Krasis can do. Cause that also just uses like all of their lands, and that sets them up for like one wrath killing them kind of thing. Yeah, my opponent's gonna win this. What I mess up with. I think I should have named Krasis there. The card's just messed up. Yeah, Mullen to 5 didn't help, but I, th I think I should have named Krasis. And of course, that was their one card in hand that they just drew that turn and then they killed me so I couldn't I couldn't beat a crisis in their hand where I could maybe beat a field of the dead with Ugin ticking up so I, I named the wrong thing with on ego So I could play the two amulets instead of the fountains. But then I don't have amulets to grab with Karn. That's fine. Yeah, spyglasses are very good here. I have I have two in the main, I have two in the board. I'm keeping two in the board to be able to grab with Karn the Great Creator. But yeah, spyglasses are very good in this matchup. I don't know about this. Uh, man, I feel bad that I died to Krasis there. I could have definitely used another couple of minutes off my opponent's clock that game one too. Like if we if we lose this by just a couple of minutes, I could have wasted more time that game one. Thanks, Esau. All right, glad, glad you're enjoying the, the the games. Whether we win or lose, it's it'll all be good. Thanks. Uh, 
All right, Fairy Time Raveler out of here. Very good hand there with the Elvish Rejuvenators ramping them. Hoping they do not find Field of the Dead with Rejuvenator. Do not want them to find Field of the Dead. He still played Time Raveler. If you show remorse, okay. I'll show restraint. This would have been a really good spot for an Unmored Ego. Couldn't find it, though. Thanks, Virgil. Glad you're, glad you're enjoying the YouTube channel. Thanks for sitting, by, sitting back and watching some live now. Okay, no. No Field of the Dead. All right, let's find one of our three Egos. We've been digging. And digging here. Um, this is still probably better than a random card, though. Because you know, name blast zone. I'll go ahead and take it. I could name Field of Ruin. I mean, I have my own Field of Ruin, but if I name that, then they don't get to blow up my treasure cove. Um. And do that. Could have just spent two treasures, and then I would have had, what, just two artifacts in play, and instead of playing Spyglass, play Tezzeret? No. All right, so we need to find something for the escape ship. We need to either draw Unmoored Ego. Darn it. They grabbed a field of the dead. All right, well, we need to find Kaya's Wrath. Or uh, Legion's End. Come on, deck. We're digging. Okay, okay. That's a card. Yeah, yeah, Spyglass blocks my own Field of Ruin. I just have one Field of Ruin in here. It's not very likely I draw it. Oh, Ixalan's Binding? Did I see that before? I don't know if I did or not. I don't think I did. I only saw... You think this fight mattered? Yeah, no, I only saw the other white enchantment. Can we draw Akaya's Wrath, please? And stay alive. Yeah, our second amulet, Kaya's Wrath, Legion's End. Any of those. Couldn't find an unmoored ego or thought erasure in time to take that thing. I still have to wait a turn for Blast Zone. They don't get to Blast Zone next turn. So yeah, Amulet does only slow them down a little bit. So I probably should have named Blast Zone, but 
but like the field of dead would have broken up this treasure cove, letting me not letting me draw these extra cards though. Mastermind's too slow. Let's just draw a Kai's Wrath or a Legion's End. Just draw one of those. We get our two draw steps. We know these are not them. All right, we've drawn what nine land, eight lands, and we scried two lands to the bottom. Ego, you're too late. That doesn't help either. So 15, 16, 17. So we don't die. Well, at this point, we're just taking Hydro Crisis. Anything else? Just the tears, Draken. You cannot, once you reach a certain rating, you cannot derank from there. We'll get two more draw steps again. We started with a treasure map and we did a whole lot of digging, but Unward Ego is way too late and, and we didn't see any removal. It, I guess, no, because it wouldn't, no, so it wouldn't work because Amulet doesn't work there because they have the Blast Zone on too. So it would have had to hit me into, like the, the Mystic would have had to hit me into um, I mean, I guess I, I guess I did have an out though. It would have been crazy to have enough mana. I would have had to play if I played Ugin and then Mystic Forge. Yeah, no, I, I, I did have enough mana. So actually I should have played it. Cause if I would have played Ugin, then Mystic Forge. And then if the top card and, you know, I could, I could get rid of two dead cards. Cause with the Ugin tick up and the Mystic Forge, get rid of a card. I forgot about the other amulet. If we if we find the other amulet and then get to play the other amulet, plus we find Karn, we had to find like like it's tough. We had to find <laughs> our one of other amulet that was in the deck and plus one of the two Karn the Great Creators, and then Karn goes and grabs another Spyglass, and then Spyglass on Deputy. But then no, the one one still kill me. No, because then the they still have the one one creatures. Those things kill me. So I was dead there. And actually, I had 9 mana, and that requires 10 mana. So actually, I didn't have enough mana for that anyway. So actually, no, I, I couldn't. So. 
We would have had one blocker with Ugin, but not they would have had the two creatures. And actually, and and that all requires ten mana because it requires six six for Ugin, two for Mystic Forge, two for Karn, and I had nine mana. Yeah, the Elvish Rejuvenators kill me. Still. Oh well. So, I ended up losing that. Um, couldn't find Kaya's Wrath or Legion's End there to save us. Game three. I my hand that I kept there game three was just like you know lands and treasure map with a lot of digging, but I think I I think I should mulligan. I think I need to have unmoored ego or Kai's wrath. You know I gotta have one of those. I gotta have like I think I gotta have that unmoored ego, or you know thought razor Kai's wrath that kind of stuff. I guess I should have I guess I should have uh, mulliganed. The rejuvenators were were really really good for our opponent there. Yeah, scape ships tough. Scape ships tough. They, yep, they do. They do fight through hate well. Um, oh well, that's Esper Colorless. That was a really sweet deck. We got to do some really cool stuff. Um, that game two against the the Gruel deck, which was a horrible matchup, but with that game two, we got to do some really cool stuff there. And even some of the other times, like Ugin Mystic Forge with that Sahili over there. That was really cool. So good deck here. So thanks for that donation deck. There. Good brother having me build this mystic forge deck i liked it this was fun fun one to play very long long games though you know i was like close to a, a three hour you know close to three hours for those five matches um but it was a lot of fun all right if you're watching the video later on youtube hope you enjoyed it as well and if so don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there i'd appreciate that but thanks for watching esper colorless and i'll see you for the next video